So we, we hope to do something uh, a little different in this meeting from past meetings uh, that we might have seen. And we, may, we hope that you will allow us to challenge you. Um, so the first uh, axiom of the meeting is that uh, no one gets to the stars alone. So one guy working in a corner probably will never make it to the stars by himself with no interaction with other people. In fact, we probably anticipate that it will entail engineering, maybe like the railroads. It's probably going to be a big production. And it will entail a broader mainstream science than we know today. So a breakthrough will have occurred. Uh, now, to get there, uh, I think for all of us who have great ideas, the first step is to convince the second person. So you have a good idea. Now your next step is to convince the second person. Uh, that's on the way to mainstream science. That's on the way to engineering. That's on the way to convincing thousands of people and investors. The second person. So. Uh, this is your opportunity to convince the second person. Uh, now, if you have a discovery, you haven't convinced anyone, unfortunately, you haven't crossed the goal line. Now, maybe you have poor people skills, maybe some of us are delusional, but we have to get over that hurdle of convincing the second person. Otherwise, we really don't have anything to write home about. Uh, so. We, the, the style and the format of this meeting is based on the fact that you can't get to the stars, have a breakthrough in a 15 minute presentation at AIAA, five minutes for questions, go home and repeat next year. So we, we felt we needed a format that allowed the technical interchange to separate the wheat from the chaff. And uh, move the ball forward for society. Uh, this is editorial, but again, it, if we convince the naive, we really haven't done anything. It might make us feel good in the short term, but it doesn't get us to the stars. Uh, so, uh, we want to abide the norms of science. And when we talk about going to the stars, lots of stuff churns up. But when we talk about finding a cure for polio, we never, that stuff never churns up. You know, we just roll up our sleeves, we do the scientific method. Uh, so we would like to take that same approach here. We bring that to bear, which we all know and love. Uh, so this is for scientists, engineers. Now it doesn't mean that you have to be an expert. It doesn't mean you have to answer all the equations. Uh, you can still be a layman and still ask uh, technical questions but we want to have that level of detail there for everyone who wants to avail themselves of it. Uh, just some notes. So we have some, cons you know, some pillars of science like conservation of energy and momentum. Uh, all of our technical uh, progress the past couple centuries have been built on these pillars. If you have an idea to get to the stars that requires abandoning conservation of momentum, that might be okay, but you have a steep hill to climb and this is your chance to explain, for example, why you know, conventional physics doesn't hold. But otherwise, we have that expectation. Uh, so, tooth fairy, yeah, steep hill to climb. So the conduct, we want to be respectful and constructive and courteous. Uh, we want, Heidi and I will, make sure we all stay on topic. Uh, we want to keep the discussion on point. And it, generally, we want to split the uh, discussion uh, into two parts. We want to look at the theory and the experiment. Sometimes we have strong theories with no experiment, so we won't spend a lot of time if there's nothing to discuss and vice versa. But we want to have that opportunity to sort of systematically look at the theory and experimental aspects. Uh, let's see, objective reality. Uh, so also uh, help your colleague. It is healthy to have a good idea, put it out there. 
see if it floats, you know. So we are doing our friends a favor by asking them questions that they might not have thought of. Um, let's see. And so I'd say the last thing is sort of a two-way on the one hand, if I have a good idea, I want to explain it to other people. This is my opportunity to explain. But it's also your opportunity to find out if there is something viable, something that really uh, is productive or has potential. Uh, if we have some crazy idea that doesn't work, I think we're better off jumping on a train that's rolling than one that's not going anywhere. So I think there's value both directions in this exchange. Uh, funding, I had a few words on funding. I, I think uh, the way that space is funded has changed quite a bit in the past decade, certainly in the past 30 years. I think that we don't need to worry about funding before the idea is proven. I think we have a good idea, we convinced a second person, you have an experiment, then the capital will come. There are entrepreneurs out there, uh, and there are sources of funding, as we all know, uh, but they, I think they want to see something worth investing in. So I don't think we really have a question of funding. We have a question of convincing the second person. And that's about it. <laughs> no the comments on this. I, I think you ought to rescind that comment. That, that's oh, what what was that plans to you own the company? No. Okay. Thank you. So, the Institute. The are, you, Institute. are you talking about the NASA comment? <clears throat> yeah, I'm sorry, that's editorial, but it seems, you know, I mean, we haven't gotten very far since Apollo. I don't think anyone would argue with that. But, but that's beside the point. I apologize for editorializing. I like NASA as much as anyone. So. Yeah, but you wouldn't let your daughter marry one. And <laughs> yeah, they, they inspired me, and uh, I'm, I'm grateful for them. So, um, okay. So next on the agenda is uh, Gary, who will talk about an introduction to SSI, our uh, co-sponsor of the meeting.